and welcome back to another episode of Farming Life at La Forge. So today Dad is going to be starting his brand new project so we're going to show you that and also the muck spreader that's on the back of the 8730 so that has got a flat tire um, so Dad is going to be showing you how he mends that and putting it all back together. So I hope you guys enjoy today's video if you do please give it a thumbs up it really does help out the channel and you can also subscribe to stay up to date on our Farming Lives here in France. Muck spreader, flat at the bottom. The first puncture I ever got on it actually. And uh, the very hard, hard, uh, what would I say, very high ply tires. Let's look and see. So, I was using this thing I got for knocking down the tires. Works okay on the outside, but on the muck spreader, it was got to, that you wouldn't have to take off the tires or the wheels off a tractor. To work on a tractor because you have room at the back, but you have no room on that. And I was trying to do it myself underneath and hold it up on my knee, but it was just uh, too hard. Plus the big order didn't take the wheel off anyways. But um, other than that, then it knocks it down, does not bother. Now my cameraman was gone, so uh, we didn't video that, but I'm sure there'll be lots, lots more wheels, you'll see. So now just putting it back together, and uh, get it uh, done and dusted this evening because we'll have to shift more cattle and uh, that's it so uh, it's nearly like a prolapse this show No, so the door more. And then I try to see. It's that wax. Well, more for a tubeless tire, but it makes it easier to slip on. Go! 
bugs everywhere, huh? Too much like work for Jesse to go fencing. <laughs> too hot. Is it too hot for you to fence it? The sledge So just in case, not to break off the valve. Now, very hot out. The camera's overheating. 26 degrees. It's either snowing or freezing or roasting. Check it up small bit. I just thought I'll leave it here this evening, check the pressure, let down the jack, and I'll leave it there for morning just to make sure it's still up. Should be okay. And uh, that's it. That's that job done and dusted. So this here is the camper. So it's the camper that fits on the back of the Hilux. And we're gonna show you now Dad's going doing some upgrades to it soon. So we're at our camper, giving it a bit of an upgrade. We haven't used it in uh, two years uh, because of the pa pandemic. Over here is a great place for a camper because uh, at a short notice you can be in Spain in five hours or six hours. Um, so that's mainly why we got. Uh, if there's a, a window there for a, you know, it crops up, we can just go off. Um, in short notice, you don't have to be booking hotels or anything, and uh, it's just going to get away for two or three days. We bought the camper. Um, the fellow that owned it had before, he just bought the shed. Now, it's a very good job because it's all one complete uh, fiberglass, and it's really strong, and it just drops onto the Hilux. And there's no fear of the leaks or anything. And it's not too heavy for it. That was our biggest fear when we bought it. Now, it's about uh, two foot longer than the camper, or than the Hilux itself. So when you just let down the tailboard, 
it comes to it. So it's the it's the length of the Hilux and the tailboard as well. So uh, we're making this roof rack now for it. And it's all out of old piping. This was, uh, we're just kind of recycling it. There are all the fittings of it. Uh, it's galvanized piping and it's not heavy. So uh, it's harder to weld, but it won't be rusting as much because it'll be up in the camper the whole time. So uh, this is what, I can show you here, I have it done out on a board. So there's the camper looking in at the side of it. And that's going to be the, that little line there, if you can see it, is the roof rack I'm making. So then the solar panels will fit on the top. And uh, when I just disconnect the little clip, they'll go up automatic with the little uh, rams. And then this is the back of it here. So I'll have a ladder up along here to get up to open them up or check them out or whatever. So the other thing with it as well, the... the uh, camper is about maybe uh, four inches sticking out each side of the high looks so I'm just putting uh, little marker lights all around it as well so the idea of the tubing iron is that I can feed the wires up all up through the through the tubing so there's no the, the wires will come down the roof around the roof rack and down the ladder and in underneath so no water will, uh, I won't be boring the holes up here at all for laying wires. <coughs> so um, this is the, the solar panels we got. Now we got them before for the electric fence, but these are actually a heavier uh, frame. Uh, they're actually, they set on the yoke, they were fire campers. So I have this frame made now. Uh, I was out of there uh, last night. So it's pouring rain now today, and it's ideal for working on uh, this job. So uh, I made up this frame here. These two here are off the whole cab off the 6550, 5595, is it? Yeah. So then this will go up and down, and I just have a rubber clip here, and the solar panel will fit onto it there, and it will go up and down, it will stay up. When I park up, I open this and let, let the, it'll charge up the battery. Now there's another one going there, going on there. Now there's a bit of time with this old, when you're recycling this uh, thing, there's a bit of, it takes a bit of time, but uh, nearly every bit of it is uh, recycled except the solar panels. And um, that's good. So. Uh, what I'm left to do now is these marker lights here. There's one. There are the marker lights I was telling you. They're nice little LEDs. I'll put one there, front and back, and then I'll have the wires going up through, and the ladder will be down this side. Uh, so I'll climb up along. Why I left it so long then is that's for, for the hump of the here is where the hump of the camper is, but I want to have it for the lights, to not to be bringing wires along. There's no way to bore or anything on that camper. So maybe there I might put a box sometime if we're going for a bit longer for holding stuff, a roof box. And uh, so that's it. Uh, hope to go to the Highland show on it, if all weather permits and silage and cows and whatnot. And uh, that's it. There's another unit here. Oh, yeah. So this is more of the stuff that came with the... It, this time, the two solar panels and all the, this unit came and the wires and everything is all one unit. So you don't have to be... Uh, so this fits in the camper. And uh, that's for your lights and all your things off it. Uh, that's your solar panel, so the two wires from this, all the solar panels go in here. Then it charges the battery, and then so then that's for your, your lights and all. So then this will turn on and off everything. Uh, normally, when it comes up here, when you have the battery and all in, it'll, it'll tell you what you're getting out of your solar panels. 
It's the same with the lithic fences, only this is a bigger unit. And you can charge up your um, phone. phone and the whole lot there. So, uh, yeah, a little upgraded a bit. Uh, we have a few other little bits to do to the camper as well. And uh, they, that's all we're going to do for this year. We'll do a bit every year. We didn't spend a fortune on the camper, but it's just nice to get away for a couple of days. So, back here at the roof rack or the solar panel rack for the camper. And uh, solar panels are on. Just putting on these brackets here now for the lights. There. And have a hole going straight through for the, so to feed the wire the whole way along. And uh, I have this bracket now. And uh, four of them made up. So I have to put that bracket on there, like that. And uh, then turn it upside down, weld it, and get the camper in. So there is the solar panel. And it has a little ram there. So you just hear them, it fits into these little brackets. And I have rubber here. Plus, the way that the way them solar panels were designed that you bolt this onto the camper and the solar panel on top of this. I did it a small little bit different so I have the, on this one here I have it bored as well it's there, I don't know if you can see the hole so I'm bolting it to the frame I made and I have a clamp as well so, when I pull up in a campsite or the side of the road or wherever we are, all I have to do is let these up if I want to get a bit more sun. Uh, now, it should pick up enough sun as well on their flat. So, camper is in the workshop. And the roof rack is there. So, I'm making these brackets here and out. Out of the waste stuff as well. And uh, I'll show you the plan. So that's the there. So I'm making them, they're all hooked down there, it's dead level across. And I put a bolt here on the side. And uh, so when I lay down the roof rack, it'll sit there, one bolt, and then I put up a piece out of there uh, and reinforce it. So, uh, yeah, that should do. And uh, as I said before, it's a big, huge, solid piece of fiberglass. We were going to buy a new shell ourselves and do it ourselves, but we just wouldn't have the time. So, I have the three brackets on. On both sides. So now we're left on the top. Take it all together. Bob's your uncle. Now, stand it nice enough. You have to pick it down low, right? Make sure there's a slide off of that till I let it reach this. Okay. Right. Now it looks heavier than it is. So the two of you watch one another and don't do it. Have the roof rack on, and I'm just at the, at the ladder now tonight. Have to bolt it on here, and it's bolted on on top. And I said before that I'm going to bring the wires down along the ladder, this one, and in here, so they'll be nicely hidden uh, away from everything. Another thing uh, we're thinking of doing: that door is just a big sheet of glass. No. No one ever tried to break in, so we were just thinking we might have a bar that goes across there and lock it over there 
with maybe that piece of a frame on it, so no one could break in. Uh, now there'll be nothing in there. The biggest thing is if they bro broke the door, because they'd be very disappointed when they go in because there's nothing in there. But uh, that's it. And then there's a bit of flashing to go along here. I have it there, which is off the uh, shed. I'll put that there. So the, there's a little bit of a gap between there and the, the Hilux. So then when it's on the Jeep, uh, I have to find a place. The way I had this done, I made them for it on that stand. Before that, your man had just uh, acro props for a builder. He just had them up there with a, a little clip on them and she was as wavy as nothing. So I want to have a place for these to clamp on outside. The way I was doing it the last couple of times I went was I was throwing them in the door, which is all right too. But uh, normally when we're in it, we have these down and it stops it rocking. So um, that's all. Uh, tonight now should do a good bit of wood and uh, then we have to take it off and Laura says she's going to sand it and spray it. And uh, then we'll be doing a bit inside, I can show you that. So uh, we're not doing much with the inside. It's actually not too bad, just that your man did a kind of a rough job on it, but it's, other than that, it's uh, okay. So we're just gonna do, that's all we're doing this year with it, and next year we'll do something else. Uh, so I think that's all I have to say. Yeah. Uh, oh, another thing I found out about it, when I was boring the holes there, is it's a double skin, it's a kind of a cavity. It's not just a big single yoke of plastic, it's a cavity. So actually there might be no need, you want to put a uh, uh, pad inside and that and did a bad job on it. So I might just pull the helmet all together and uh, leave it the way it is because there was a nice finish on it without the pad. So when it's, the problem is, when it's not double, your man thought probably it wasn't double either, when it's not double, there would have been condensation. But now with this being double, it's a better job. So, uh, so tune in tomorrow night and uh, I'll show you why I did that tonight. Okay. Okay. So that's that for this week's episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.